Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session uh, where we, we will talk about uh, intelligent open source. Uh, for today, I'll be the speaker for, for the next minutes. Um, Tim and me will be both in the chat as well to answer uh, any kind of question. So uh, you have this first video of introducing uh, myself and then we'll, we'll proceed for, uh, for the slides. So my name is Daniel Izquierdo and I'm one of the founders of, of Vitergia, a company focused on uh, uh, analyzing open source projects and, and inner source projects that, that matter to, to any company. So we, we focus on activity, community, performance, and we are uh, running uh, different projects nowadays. So one of the opportunities we've had during the last years have been to uh, focus uh, on, on this kind of work with Uber open source. Um, today's uh, presentation is about what matters to Uber, in this case, um, what we call intelligent uh, open source. So uh, a bit of introduction, as, as I mentioned, well, Jim Jack, uh, everyone knows him. So he recently joined the Uber team for the uh, open source program office and of course co-founder of, uh, of the ASF and me myself uh, just to mention that I'm 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 active member and board member at the Inner Source Commons and the Chaos Project which is a technology we are using today uh, for to analyze uh, the, the Uber community and, and Uber open source ecosystem. So Chaos is the acronym for Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software and all the demos well, not the demos, but all the charts and everything we'll see is, has been produced with open source. So you can reproduce this by, by yourself. So if we go to, to the website of Uber, it says uber.github.io, it says uh, Uber is committed to enabling collaboration for everyone, everywhere through open source. If we think about open, other uh, open source communities and, uh, and their specific goals, all of them are usually talking about uh, having a large or massive adoption of the technology, um, uh, bringing uh, newcomers to the community, so more people and more people are using, and adopting, and sharing that specific technology. So uh, Uber, in this case, is, is aligned with uh, these open source expectations, and in this case, is uh, specifically focused on, on this concept of, of collaboration. So, what does it really mean in this case and um, for the last months of work we've been doing together? What does it mean, uh, this concept of intelligent open source, right? So there are four main areas that we, we want to focus on. One of them is engagement. The second one is collaboration. The third one is health. And then the fourth one is performance and recognition of the good work and, 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 and new contributors in, in the community. Uh, for engagement, uh, the discussion that we can have for, or for the concept in this case for Uber, um, specifically for the, for the last couple of years is um, how are Uber developers engaging in third party open source projects? And then at the same time, we'll see later that this happens in the other way around. So if Uber is donating a specific open source project, and Uber has donated several of them, um, what other individuals, developers, or organizations are participating in those projects that were uh, donated to the open source uh, ecosystem by Uber. So it's all about understanding who is who in the ecosystem and how uh, we can help each other. So uh, of course, if we, we have this uh, big square, which is the open source ecosystem, and then Uber is one of those actors here, we have these uh, crosses black crosses in this case that are uh, stating who are the Uber developers. And then we have other organization on our, our company that is um, kind of uh, working on other open source projects. However, the point is that the usual way of working is this one. So if something is open source, then it's easy to go uh, to GitHub or GitLab and, and check what uh, that, that organization, that individual is doing there. And then in reality, what was what is uh, happening nowadays is 
that uh, there are a bunch of Uber developers and these X company developers working here and there, in addition to the uh, their own open source projects. But then at the same time, there are many other companies, organizations, and individuals that are working in this way. So this is open source, and open source is about collaboration. Open source is about uh, being a, a good citizen, understanding how this works, uh, celebrating new contributions and contributors coming to from 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 any any part of the world, from uh, any organization, uh, no matters if they are profit, non-profit, if they are uh, collaborators, providers, uh, or if they are uh, competitors. So these are the rules, right? So uh, then we can focus a bit more and say, well, engagement may mean well, Uber developers engage in third-party open source projects, but then at the same time, external open source developers engage in Uber projects. And why is this important? So uh, from, from an open source perspective, from an, um, from an strategic perspective, if, if we are all uh, a large organization um, and we are using and producing open source, so that open source is is key part of our technological stack. Um, so we need to understand who is there. We need to understand how we can help to that project to advance because this is critical, critical um, uh, infrastructure for us, uh, no matter what it is. But if this is uh, aligned with this uh, criticity, then we need to we need to do something, right? So we need to understand uh, what's going on there, how we can help this to advance, and even try to align those project expectations into our own um, needs at the very end, right? So um, this this chart, what we have is, um, we have the Y axis, which are uh, pull requests opened, and then we have the X axis that are the issues open. And then we have the size of each of the dots are the number of contributors. So each of these dots are um, all of the projects where um, developers that are working in Uber organizations. So we have Uber, we have Uber Research, Uber Web, some others, and projects that were donated by, by Uber. Uh, so all of these, we take all of this set of developers, and then we what we've done is to analyze where, where else they've been working in the GitHub ecosystem. So this is focused on, on GitHub. Um, so basically, the more we are uh, moving to the right, the more issues we're open in that, in that project. And the more we go up in the y-axis, the more pull requests were open in that project by people that are that have participated at any time in, in any Uber project. Not not only Uber developers, okay? So those are Uber employees and non-Uber employees. Uh, so the, the question we have on the table is what else they've been working at. And then we have these two projects. So if we if we analyze them a bit more, so we have this green dot here, uh, there are a bunch of uh, uh, developers that are participating in certain Facebook uh, projects. Facebook, this means in, in this case, github.com slash Facebook. And then same here for Apache. And then we have these two projects, Pyro, PPL, and CockroachDB. So uh, from, uh, from, from a storyline perspective, what we have is uh, these two projects, they don't have that many contrib uh, contributors, but they have a lot of contributions for people that have participating in the last two years at some point in uh, in Uber in Uber projects. And then we have Apache projects, Facebook, so perhaps Facebook, this is a shared project between uh, Facebook and Uber or the other way around, Uber participating in Facebook projects or Facebook projects participating in, in Uber ones. So this chart here, what, what we can see is uh, um, the network analysis of all of those developers. So if we check the dots, in this case dots, as we, we can see here, dots are projects. And then the blue squares that we see here and there, those are developers. So all of the blue squares that we can see here are um, developers that have at any time produced something in the Uber ecosystem. Um, and then uh, the whole chart that we can see here is where else those developers ignoring in this case Uber projects and personal projects, so your personal GitHub account, uh, are participating at. So we, we, we can see that probably all of these projects are some of the biggest ones uh, that we saw before in terms of number of contributions. But then if you look at the 
Pyro PPL or Cockroach TV. Those are the two projects that we can see here in, in this in this analysis. So it's quite interesting because then once we, we, we have this understanding, we can see how each of the developers are connected to others. So then we can kind of follow where those developers and how those developers are connected, where else they are working at. Uh, perhaps we can uh, predict the new hot project right in the JavaScript ecosystem or in the Python ecosystem. So this is something uh, uh, we can try to guess, right? Or we can try to predict based, based on all of this network analysis. Um, uh, just a, a more in-depth analysis, this chart, this pie chart, is providing by each of the projects that we saw before. Uh, in this case, by yeah, by, by by project, the number of pull requests open. So we can see that, for instance, Facebook, even when this had a lot of contribution contributors, is not one of the first ones. So we can see that the first one in this case, in terms of number of pull requests open in the last couple of years, uh, by Uber and non, non Uber employees are Pyro PPL, Cockroach DB, uh, uh, B, uh, Apache. Um, Horobot, etc. So there are a bunch of them, um, and, and, and with, with this in mind, then we can see what what matters, for instance, to the to the Uber ecosystem, right? So, what are the other projects that might be uh, important for for our own developers? So the second um, concept that we would like to to discuss today is is collaboration, and collaboration is an important topic because um, collaboration is about working together with other organizations, right? So we have a clear way of working, clear set of rules to, to, to work together. Um, it's about uh, collaborating. Of course, if this is a, a project that has been released by uh, my own company, there are some chances that at least at the very beginning, uh, our own developers uh, keep working in the same way, right? So uh, you have someone working in, in a desk pretty close to you, uh, so then you ask for a pull request or or you ask for a review, etc. Right? The way we should be moving this is well, from time to time we need to check certain KPIs, for instance, and time to close, time to merge, and check if those that are not from our own organization, in this case, Uber Open Source, are uh, are behaving in a different way than our own developers. So we the idea is that all of this way of working should be as homogeneous as possible. So there shouldn't be any kind of difference between uh, Uber developers in this case, or the behavior of Uber developers and the behavior of non-Uber developers. And the time to close and the time to attend and the time to respond, etc. etc. So if we bring uh, the previous analysis, uh, just a quick uh, a quick overview here, dots are now developers and then the, the squares here are our main projects, main organizations that we are analyzing for, for Uber in this case. So dots are developers, they are connected to one of these blue squares, as this one or this one or here, but probably you don't see this blue square here or this blue square here. So those are the projects, but the, kind of the big organization. So this is mainly Uber organization, this is Uber organization. Um, Uber research was around here, but N3DB, N3DB is around as well. So each dot is a developer. And then the point here is now that each color is an organization and company. So this legend here, of course, you, you, see, you see probably nothing, is each of those organizations. And then we can see what, what this was in 2013 and what this is in 2020, right? So these large number of organizations are, um, are, are many more than, than, than a few years ago. So there is a clear evolution between this uh, seven years difference in, in Uber, and Uber, of course, has have released a big amount of, of projects and open source, but we can see how uh, we had a few companies interested in, in the technology at the beginning, and, and then nowadays what this means for Uber, what, what this is uh, for Uber projects, uh, collaboration. So each of the dots, each of the colors are different corporations participating in, in the development here. So we were we were moving from like 10, 20, probably like to 70, 80 organizations in this case. So uh, this is collaboration in Uber nowadays. And then health. So the third, the third uh, topic we wanted to discuss today was health. So health is uh, what we mean nowadays together with Uber Health is, uh, well, we are 
trying to understand and have awareness about what's going on with the projects that matter to us. And those initially are those projects that are under the Uber umbrella, in the sense of uh, the GitHub organization, but then those that were donated. So we are interested in understanding how they are, how they are evolving, the deltas, the evolution, the trends, the KPIs, the specific uh, activity and community KPIs, etc. So um, one of the first analyses we, we came with was this uh, activity, so the last active repositories by data source. So then we can go for, uh, for instance, for uh, the very last active when when I, I, I retrieved this data was Kepler, which is under the Uber uh, organization. And then we have each of the different um, data sources. So we have Git, we have the issues, we have the pull request, and then we have the aggregated uh, last activity. So then we can see what are the most active or the last active, let's say. But if we keep going, because this is a table, then we would see um, well, the, the less active and how they are evolving. With this respect, uh, we have this uh, active Git repositories evolution. So, uh, and then we have the trend. So the red line is the trend. So this is positive for the last couple of years. Oh, sorry, not 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 couple of uh, two couple of years, but the la the the five couple of years. So this evolution is telling us well, this is the number of active repos and the active and the trend of those repos over time, if they are active, if they are not becoming active, etc, etc. And then we see kind of the life cycle here, so the top 25 repositories by, by number of commits. So there are some that has been active for, for a long time, for the last five years, as m3db, m3.git or m3db.git. But then there are others that basically have been kind of abandoned. So we can see that there are certain repositories, as you can see here, that they uh, gave up contributing, and then but then there are others that for some reason they uh, they were contributed, then they, they didn't have any contribution for for a while, then they uh, uh, developers started to contribute again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is a really uh, useful way to to see the life the, to to see this life cycle from a repository's perspective. From a community perspective, and now uh, nowadays that we are under this uh, COVID nineteen situation that, by the way, I hope that you are all all right at home. Uh, uh, so we can see uh, the evolution of, of the active contributors over time and the growth analysis that we can produce based on those. So these blue line are the active contributors that we have over time um, for the last uh, couple of years across all of the data sources. So we mentioned issues, pull requests, etc, etc. And then it's interesting to see this uh, um, this decrease here. So uh, having this data, having all of this analysis may be useful to understand the impact of the COVID-19, right? Uh, with respect to the bars, green bars are those that are displaying a positive difference if, uh, uh, so those are green if there is a positive difference between this point in time and this point in time. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a yellow bar is, is so going down is indicating that there is a negative difference between this slot here and this slot here. So then we can see the this uh, evolution of contributors. And then uh, the final one is about performance and recognition, celebration, celebration of, of new contributions and new contributors. So for this, we were discussing about having a couple of KPIs. One of them uh, related to performance is the review efficiency, efficiency index. This is based on uh, a usual uh, um, management metric, which is BMI, which is the Backlog Management Index. And this is telling us what are the number of, of close uh, of tickets or PRs, in this case, that we are able to close over time, uh, if compared to the new uh, things that are coming to the community. Of course, again, we have this peak. These peaks are usually related to, to Christmas or any national holidays. But this nowadays, what we have is this peak. So suddenly happened here, right? I assume this is COVID-19. So this means that values under one, uh, uh, we are leaving certain percentage of the new things simply open. So this means that in this case, uh, the community is able to close or to deal with 80% of the pull requests that we have. But then at the same time, right after this, I guess that everyone was working again uh, after the, the first impact, suddenly the community was able to deal with uh, 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 more than 10% extra, right? So this means that we had some amount of time with no work, and then after this, 
the impact was uh, kind of balanced. So with this, we can see this, this evolution of the review efficiency index, and this can be applied to any other data source or issues, etc., etc. So uh, the lead time is another metric we, we can use. Um, in this case, what we have is the time to close. So the lead time is the total time it takes to, to close to close anything in days. So we are having this uh, this metric in days. So Uber was kind of stable, of course, but then again, we have this huge peak. And this is, of course, related to the, uh, to the activity that we saw before. So this is taking much longer uh, suddenly here. Why? Well, we all know what's, what's going on here right nowadays. So this might be related to COVID-19. Uh, this is still an hypothesis, I have to say, so we have not uh, double checked this, but this, there, there are kind of indicators that are saying, hey, warning here, there are some uh, analysis that we, we may reconsider. And then the new contributors, which is the, the very last uh, topic I would like to discuss for today. So these are all of the newcomers, so those that produced uh, in certain period of time their first commit. So we have like, for instance, in 2016, this big uh, peak here of new contributors. And then we see like uh, after 2017, more or less, we, we've had a continued increase of newcomers to the community. So we can celebrate, we know who they are, so we can welcome them, right? Um, so if you want uh, to learn a bit more about all of this, uh, please check uh, Uber Open Source Program Office. Um, if you are interested about the technology that we've seen today, please join Chaos Project and Remark Lab. And if you are interested about uh, Viterdia and what we do, uh, please uh, go to viterdia.com. So this has been all. I hope this is uh, useful for you, interesting. Uh, I hope that at this, at this point we've had a great uh, discussion in the chat and hope you the best. So thank you all for your time and see you next time. So thanks. Have a good day. Very well done, Daniel. Extremely well Thank you very well. much. <laughs> So we have some time here at the end for Q&A, and both Daniel and I are here. So uh, I know that some people have been using the, uh, the Q&A uh, chat function, uh, and Daniel has been incredibly good in answering those. Uh, but we're also here available live as well. So please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask us any questions you may have. So if not, one of the questions we may have, so we can we can have some open discussion between you and me, Jim. Yes, that sounds good. Let's have that. Let's do that. So what, what, what does it mean for you or for Uber Open Source to be a good citizen in open source? What does, uh, oh, we have a question. Oh, we perfect. Have a question. Oh. So all yours. Okay, so Justin asks, do you see a greater demand for open source in general as a cost-cutting measure for businesses dealing with new recessions? Uh, I think that, first of all, that's a very, very good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, I think that is certainly one aspect of it. One of the great benefits inside of any company in leveraging open source is that you're able to save your expensive developer talent for the, the code and the internal programs and projects, which really differentiate the company, that, that make them different and better than their competitors. Uh, instead of them working on things which they could easily um, you know, use open source offerings for, you're focusing that talent on things that really make a difference to the company. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's something which has always been one of the reasons why companies migrate and use open source, but especially now when cost cutting uh, is very, very important um, and making sure that you're getting uh, uh, the most out of your developers and engineers, I think you're seeing a lot of people, a lot of companies really look at open source as a great way of, of you know, um, tightening their purse strings, you know, and tightening their belts and knuckling under for, uh, for, recess, uh, for um, recessions. So yes, definitely. So there is, there is another question from Agustin. So the question is from what you have presented, what can be translated to product platform development within a company. So I assume this is kind of related to inner source or internal development. 
um, and I would say most of it because we are we are talking about uh, uh, mostly siloed companies and so on that we are, that are trying to improve to to collaborate to share expertise and, and knowledge and um, any of these metrics and and basically uh, health uh, analytics that we we have presented are important there are important there as well so instead of working at the level of organizations collaborate collaborating we can go for um, uh, for business units that are the ones breaking those silos. Yeah, definitely true. And just to add on top of that, I've seen in a number of companies, not Uber, uh, by the way, but where, um, you know, there are silos inside there. And even though there is software and projects that could be very easily shared, there is still some resistance in doing that because what happens if that team goes away or the priorities of that business unit change? And so other teams are resistant to using something internally. Whereas if you do open source it or you do make it an inner source project, then that re that re removes that restriction. The people feel much more comfortable and confident, uh, you know, depending on something that they don't have ultimate control over because whether it's inner source or open source, you've got this healthy, engaged community keeping that project going. And that's something which is translated to to all kinds of companies and corporations out there. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jim. So I think this is this is all the time we have for today. So you can find us in Slack and Twitter, etc. So thank you for your time. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe. Yeah. Cheers.